Welcome to another training offered by the North Carolina Office of State Fire Marshal. Today in our Ask Vince show, we're going to be going over simple repels. Vince, what kind of devices can we use to repel with? Well, there are all kinds of different devices uh, that you can repel with. Brake racks, uh, figure eights, tubers, there's all kinds of different devices that people use to, to repel with. But a couple of the most common are the figure eight and, of course, the brake racks. How about using the figure of eight? Yeah, the figure eight, this is another very common device, real popular device people like to use. Uh, it's real simple, no moving parts, pretty basic operation. Uh, the only drawback it has is, especially in the rescue environment, is it doesn't allow you to adjust that friction once you start your repel. Once you've rigged this device, it's rigged. It doesn't allow you to take away or add friction to the device. So when you're doing a pickoff, uh, for example, you may want to add the friction because you've added a load to the, to the package. But not to say you can't do it, it just, it's one of the drawbacks to it. And so in that case, it's really going to be on your lower hand, it's going to be a lot more work in your arm strength if you had a heavier load to, to be able to hold that friction versus if we had the brake bar rack, we could add more friction into it if we needed to. Exactly, exactly. Because if you started out with a double wrap on a large eight plate, it may be very difficult for the rescuer to even access the patient or to get to them. So he elects to, to go down with a single wrap on a on a brake rack, then once he picks the load up, it is going to get a little bit precarious uh, for us, the, uh, the friction. He's going to have to he's going to, have to pick up the load with his hand. Okay. What's the difference in rigging the figure eight versus the brake bar rack? Okay, as I stated earlier, there's no moving parts, which is a, a real benefit. You always want to stand with your brake hand. I'm right-handed, for example. If I were going to repel, I want to use my right hand as my brake hand on my lower back. My left hand, of course, would be up above me as the guide. Carney, on the other hand, He's left-handed, and he's going to want his left hand in his lower back. The only thing to remember is if you'll always face the rope and with your hand that is your, your braking hand towards the slope you're going to rappel down, it'll always rig right. You just form a bite, pass it through the large hole, come over the smaller end, and then you're going to clip in. And this will always configure the figure eight plate in such a manner that you'd want to use it for rappelling. The problem would be if you rig this thing wrong and it got crossed up, now you can see I've actually got it rigged for a right hand, but I've configured it for a left-handed repel, which creates an unusual angle across the, uh, the eight plate, and it also allows the rope to put rope on rope, which is a lot of added friction, uh, something we probably don't want to do, a lot of added wear and tear on your equipment. So I'm going to take it loose, and I'm going to give it to Carney and let him hook up and get ready to right. repel. Again, as far as rigging it, we form a bite. We come through the main section and around the bottom. And again, I'm left-handed. Go ahead and tighten this up. And so I want the rope to come out the left side. Once we have the figure of eight loaded, we lock it in our carabiner. We want to make sure that's locked and secured. At this point, I'll check my belay line, also making sure that carabiner is locked and secured. And now I'm getting ready for repel. At this point, Vince, if you would go back and, and belay me, check my hardware. I got you. On belay. Belay is on. On repel. Repel on. Okay. At this point, before I step to, to my, my incline where I'm going over, the belay is tight, but I would want to take up any kind of extra slack that is in the main line as I start going to it. So I would get that tight where I actually have the load. And hand placement when we're using, using a, a device such as this is we want to keep that top hand way above it. We don't want to get too close to it and definitely don't want to get underneath it because if I were to hold my hand here and as I'm repelling down, I could actually repel my hand into the system and then I would end up having to be rescued myself. So we always want to keep that hand over at the top. And so just as using the uh, mini brake bar rack, we want to get close to the side and easily start our transition as we go across, keeping our legs apart and repel on down. In our previous training segments, we showed you how to do a simple repel using both a figure of eight and a brake bar rack. What we'd like to do now is demonstrate how to lock yourself off in case you needed to work on the side of the mountain. As you see right now, I have the figure of eight in a position for a left-handed repel, and I've repelled down to the point that I'm at. I do have my belay line, which is, is secured and holding me in place. 
there are numerous different methods for being able to lock off a figure of eight. The first I'm going to show is we simply pull pressure back up on the rope and we have to keep pressure on this rope and it comes back over and as you see it's crossing and I'm going to pop it in place by pulling pressure and you see what has happened here is that rope now has dropped down inside of that figure of eight. The next thing I'm going to do is go around the other ear, come back across the top and do the same thing again. Again it's locking both places in point. It's causing a friction point which is going to keep me from sliding. At this point there's several methods for doing a safety. One is to actually go through the eight and tie overhand knot or two half hitches and the second is to go around the device itself such as this. And that gives me a safety point where I can let go with my hands now and if I needed to move around to be able to work I could do that. Another way of doing this which gives more support as I'm undoing this where well, you want to be careful the first time you lift up you're going to feel a pop still have friction device. Now this next time when I pull the rope up it's possible for me and my weight to drop a little bit. I have to be ready to carry the load when I do this. So I'm going to come up, see the pop that happened, now I've distributed the weight back. A second way of doing this is actually to go around my, my backside and this gives me more support and more friction of the rope against my body and I come up and I do the same thing I did the first time. Pull in, I've got a lock second time over, lock again. As you see both are down below the ears and then I would simply tie my knot to safety. So what I've done is I've safety myself off and I'm at a point where I could freely work. And again the way to take this out is to undo our safety here as I come back my first pop, the friction going around my body is going to help me again with this as I come up on the second one. And then I simply transfer the load back over and now I'm ready to repel again.